Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Major General Roger Cloutier. I am the commander of U.S. Army Africa Southern European Task Force. Uh, and it's great to be here, and we appreciate the opportunity to present a Warrior's Corner. On behalf of myself and Command Sergeant Major Jeremiah Emin and my Sergeant Major, uh, we look forward to talking about a really important topic, and that's growing enlisted leadership in Africa. I can't wait for you to hear from my Sergeant Major, from Warrant Officer 1 uh, Bislamu, and from First Sergeant Lewis, who was a First Sergeant, Company First Sergeant, as part of our regionally aligned forces uh, from the 10th Mountain Division. But before I go any further, I want to say a special welcome to Major General Sicano, the Commander of Ground Forces from the Botswana Defense Forces. Welcome, sir. We're glad you're here. I also want to welcome our other African partners uh, that are in the, uh, in the audience today. So we all know that non-commissioned officers are the backbone of any Army, and because of that, I'm just going to tee it up and get out of the way and let the Sergeant Major get after it. But NCO development is something that we are passionate about in USARAF. And training or doing operations in the AFRICOM AOR uh, really puts a premium on small unit leadership. Small units working in austere environments in remote locations. They work with joint partners, interagency partners, multinational partners. And Sergeant Major Inman is going to give his perspective on how Army NCOs benefit uh, from training in the African environment. And Warren uh, Officer One Bislamu is going to talk about Malawi's Sergeant Major's course, which has been a great success and modeled after the U.S. Army Sergeant Major Academy. So U.S. Army soldiers helped stand up the academy in 2014. And they trained the trainers as part of the initial course. And the course is now run entirely uh, by the Malawi Defense Force. And it's become a regional institution, graduating more than 240 sergeants major males and females from 18 different African countries. And we're very, very proud of this partnership. So we got a short video to show you, and then our featured speakers uh, will take the floor. Thank you again for being here, and we appreciate uh, all of your uh, support. Uh, let's go ahead and roll the video. I would just say that we're doing a wonderful job down there and our focus, although um, it's a very big continent and we sometimes can't get in there in great numbers, it does have a huge impact, not just on the militaries down there, but the people. As Americans, we don't fight alone, and we never intend to. Um, it's about building allies with our, with our partner nations around the world, and Africa is one of those key components. It is up to us to bring forward creative and viable solutions to these challenges and view each one as an opportunity to work with and assist our African partners not only today but in the future as well. I'd also like to acknowledge the many leaders here representing the U.S. government interagency, our allies, and our regional partners. Thanks for your presence, thanks for your support, and thank you for your long-standing cooperation. We're all stronger because of our friendship in our shared commitment. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeremiah Inman, the uh, Command Sergeant Major for U.S. Army Africa. I'd like to thank you for blowing off the family forum and being here with us today. I hope you get 
I hope you get a lot out of it. Slide, please. So every year we hold the Africa Land Forces Summit. We'll go down, link up with our partner nation, and find out what topics they would like to discuss during that forum. The three topics the senior enlisted leader wanted to discuss was roles of the NCO, uh, how we educate and promote NCOs, and NCO empowerment. So what I did, I took a kind of a different spin on it, and we talked about the role of the U.S. Army NCO, we talked about the STEP program, and then we talked about empowerment. And I explained the way that the U.S. Army does things. This is what we need from a Sergeant E-5, this is what we need from a Command Sergeant Major. We didn't preach at them saying, this is how your NCO Corps, this is how your enlisted force needs to happen. Our Army's been in around for a little over 240 years. Our NCO program works for us. Here's how we do it. If you need assistance standing up your programs, please let us know and we'll assist you with getting after those. Next slide, please. So here you'll see uh, Sergeant Major Gilpin, my predecessor. So he was the one who had the initiative to get NCOs invited to ALFs. This was only the second time that NCOs were allowed to attend this seminar with their general officers. As you can see, one of our partners from Zimbabwe, there are 53 countries that we cover down on. Each country's army is a little bit different because it's got to support the needs of their country, and that's how they get after their development. At this point, we have about 100 African Command Sergeant Majors who have attended the U.S. Army Sergeant Majors course. Eight graduated last year. There are five currently in the course this year, so there is a desire from our African partners to continue educating our enlisted partners. Next slide, please. So you're probably thinking, okay, this is an Army Association event. Why is there an Air Force dude in the slide, okay? This is Chief James. He's the command senior enlisted leader for California. We have 11 states that are partnered with 13 countries in Africa to assist us with getting after AFRICOM's priorities. At this point here, Chief is briefing what the requirements of a staff sergeant in the United States Army is. Not the Air Force, but the Army. So don't tell Sergeant Major Daly, but I did not go to the U.S. Army Sergeant Major's course. All right? I went to the Air Force Senior Enlisted course. So it doesn't matter where enlisted and NCOs get their education. It matters that they get the, in, the education so they can contribute to their fighting force. Next slide, please. So here you have a Ghanaian sergeant teaching a U.S. Army specialist basic hand and arm signals. We as leaders need to continue to teach and empower our subordinates because they're going to take our place here in a few years. I was a TAC NCO at West Point about 15 years ago, and today I ran into one of my cadets who's an SF major. These are the folks that are going to continue to move our Army forward. We've got to continue to educate them and make them stronger. You know, in current, current battle, if a platoon leader falls, an NCO, an enlisted individual, will step up and take that platoon leader's spot. If he hasn't been educated properly, if he hasn't been trained properly, then the mission is probably not going to be successful. And consider this, if you had to go in for a medical procedure, wouldn't you want a doctor who was educated and trained to perform the procedure on you? I, I would. Next slide, please. So how does educating our enlisted contribute to readiness, right? The big buzzword, readiness. If we can educate our partners and ourselves to defeat VEO threats before they come to the homeland, that builds readiness. If we can teach our partners and educate them to defeat and kill the folks within their continent so we don't have to send U.S. forces to fight, that builds readiness. So Chief and I were walking around the World War II uh, Memorial the other day, and I just wanted to quote something I saw from President Truman. The heroism of our own was matched by that of the armed forces of the nations that fought by our side. 
They absorbed the blows and they shared the full and the ultimate destruction of the enemy. Hey man, we don't fight alone. We fight with our partners. And if we're educated, it's not only good for the continent of Africa, but it's good for, for the world. A great example of an NCO course is the Malawan Sergeant Majors Academy. And I can't speak very well in it, so I'd like to introduce Army Warrant Officer Chief Bielamoso, the, basically the Sergeant Major of the Army for Malawi. Chief. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Warrant Officer Class 1, George B. Salom, Defense Force Sergeant Major, Malawi Defense Force. I'm here to outline how Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major is doing. So I will cover the following. I will cover when the Defense Force, Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major starts. And uh, I will cover also the relationship, uh, partnership we have with the uh, U.S. Army through AFRICOM. Then I will cover the successes of Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Majors Academy. Lastly, I will cover the challenges we are facing in Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Majors uh, course. The Malawi Sergeant Majors course started four years ago. It was 2014 when the first class of Sergeant Majors Academy started. Before 2014, it was 2011 and 2012 when uh, US, US AFRICOM gave Malawi Defense Force one slot so that Malawi Defense Force can send one Sergeant Major to attend Sergeant Major's course at USAZMA. After graduating one Sergeant Major from there is when he came back to Malawi and, they com and convinced the leadership of Malawi Defense Force so comes 2013 is when the Malawi Defense Force uh, uh, authorized to organize and start uh, Sergeant Major's Academy to start in 2014. So uh, the purpose of the Sergeant Major's uh, course in Malawi is to change from tactical level of thinking to operational level of thinking. So uh, as of now, I can say that uh, the partnership we have from uh, Malawi Defense Force and the U.S. Afri AFRICOM, it is very important and it is very successful because through this partnership is when the Malawi Defense Force started uh, our Sergeant Majors Academy. When the, our Sergeant Majors start, uh, started in 2014, uh, it was the U.S. AFRICOM sent two uh, instructors from the U.S. Army to teach the Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major's course for the first class. After graduating the, the first class is when the two Sergeant Majors choose some instructors from the class 001. And the, the Sergeant Majors who assisted Malawi a lot, uh, there are our Sergeant Major Mikhail and Sergeant Major Timothy Watts. These two instructors assisted Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major's Academy very, very good. And as I'm, as I'm talking today, Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major, we are doing very good. As successes of Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major, I'm happy to say that through the partnership we have with our uh, U.S. AFRICOM and Malawi Defense Force, the partnership is extended to almost uh, 11, countries, 11 countries from Africa. These 11, 11 countries from Africa, they have been sending their senior NSOs to attend Sergeant Majors Academy. I'm happy today to mention one by one of the, the countries which they send they are any source to Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Majors Academy. But before I mention that countries, a number of uh, graduates who graduated from Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Majors course, I would like to say this. 
the Surge Majors Academy is uh, free. When the uh, other countries from Africa send their NSOs to attend their course in Malawi Defense Force, we don't charge anything. They don't pay anything. We just send the invitation to the, our sister countries in Africa. When they come to Malawi, they just learn and do everything freely, no pay at all. So I'm happy to say that. So I would like to outline you how uh, the numbers which African countries graduated from Malawi Defense Force. First, uh, Zambia. There's uh, 13 graduates from Zambia and also seven graduates from Zimbabwe. We have almost four, uh, eight graduates from Botswana Defense Force and five from the, uh, the Kingdom of Lesotho, five graduates. And from Tanzania, uh, four graduates, Kenya, one graduate, Mozambique, five graduates, Nigeria, five, Namibia, four, and Luanda, eight. So this is the successes of Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Majors. Apart from this, the Sergeant Majors who attended this course in Malawi Defense Force, they are, are now in the high position. They are holding the position of uh, regimental sergeant majors, brigade sergeant majors, and even company sergeant majors. I myself, as, a, uh, as I'm now, I'm a graduate from the uh, first class of the sergeant majors academy. But despite these uh, successes, Sarge Malawi Defense Force sergeant majors academy are facing a lot of challenges. Some of these challenges are infrastructures. As Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major started, we just started where using the infrastructure of Malawi Armed Forces College. As of now, we don't have our own infrastructure. As a result, we are suffering when we want to uh, implement our programs as Defense Force as Sergeant Major's Academy. Since we are doing the uh, Sergeant Majors Academy at Malawi Armed Forces College, so when the college is busy with other courses, so it comes difficult to Malawi Sergeant Majors a, a, a course to continue with our programs. So if possible, if U.S. AFRICOM continue assisting us to have our own infrastructure in terms of classroom, in terms of accommodation, in terms of our... Uh, uh, office equipment like computers and any other materials so that we can go ahead, we can continue with imp implementation of our uh, programs in the uh, you know, Malawi Defense Sergeant Majors course. Other challenge is, as I said earlier on, that uh, we are doing this course, uh, Sergeant Majors uh, course, we do our own. So we need or we, we request the, our partners, US AFRICOM, to continue support us so that maybe they, they can allow our instructors to visit USASMA so that they can get more experience from uh, United States Sergeant Majors uh, Academy. So if possible, I would like to request uh, US AFRICOM to assist uh, my instructors so that they can have a visit tour to United States, um, uh, in short, I can say, to USAZIMA. So if possible, US AFRICOM try to, to assist us. With that, Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Majors Academy, we are doing well, and we are very proud that Malawi Defense Force Sergeant Major, we are doing very good. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. How you do? How you doing? My name is First Sergeant Abraham Lewis. I am uh, with 10th Mountain Division. I'm going to give you kind of an uh, idea of what uh, we did as the 10th Mountain Division. In September of 2016, or, yeah, 16, um, we were chosen to be the East African Response Force. 
and I was the first sergeant for that East African Response Force. We did about six months in uh, Djibouti, Africa, in which uh, we trained with not only the French, the German, but also the Djiboutian forces as well. They joined into a actual Marine Corps corporal's course and enjoyed some of their training. Um, one of the fears before we left was readiness, as of course is the whole entire Army's fear. What we got though out of that whole entire time was we got 24 expert infantrymen badges, 17 desert, French desert warfare uh, badges, 14 German Armed Forces badges. We completed team live fires all the way up to platoon sticks. And we also did this in an unfamiliar environment, which of course, when you take a bunch of infantry and you put them in an unf uh, unfamiliar environment, you get nothing but the best training possible. And then we came back in about March and we were told three months later that uh, we were gonna go to Ghana. So what we did was we did our team live fires and we did squad live fires before we left. Once we left, or before we left, then we also took our soldiers and we took our specialists because a lot of our sergeants had to go to NCO development courses. So we took our specialists and we put them into the classes to teach our Ghanaian partners in which they were then told, all right, you're on the hot seat. It was outstanding. We left, we left, went to Ghana in about August and uh, we spent a month over there. We partnered our NCOs with their NCOs. Um, up here you can see uh, Warrant Officer 2, Tete. He was my partner. Um, he was a great individual. He, we did PT with him in the mornings and then what we'd do is we'd flip-flop. We would teach one of our courses which would be in either tactics, maneuvers, or medical, and then they would teach a light course. And this did two things. One, it gave them buy-in for us, or to them, to that we were there to listen to what they had to say. And two, it also showed them what we could provide to them, which was outstanding when it came to partnership. Uh, we also conducted squad live fires while we were there. Again, this is doing squad live fires in a completely foreign environment. We had to develop our own live fire lane and then we went out and executed. Now, not only did we execute, but we also uh, went with the Ghanaian army and they executed the exact same thing. So we got our outstanding training and they got outstanding training along with it. After we got done with uh, United Accord 18, we went to Jungle Warfare School. And this was probably the best experience for my young soldiers. We uh, received some excellent training in jungle warfare fighting, jungle warfare fighting and surviving, and uh, they, which culminated at the end in four days in the jungle. This built a lot of good relationships with the NCOs of the Jungle Warfare School. Um, in fact, one of the Jungle Warfare School instructors was a soldier who went to one of our BLCs here in the States, and which was outstanding because as he was instructing, they used the British uh, tactics, we use, of course, our American tactics. And he could then bounce back and forth and understand that what we were coming with, but we were also flexible since we just got done doing United Accord 18 to understand their tactics as we were going through there. Um, the experience for the whole entire thing built stronger junior leaders for us. Not, I mean, it is not very, we have our woods here in the United States but it is nothing compared to the jungles of Africa, which was outstanding for our NCOs. It also mentored the, our NCOs um, both ways. We mentored their NCOs, they mentored our NCOs. And I think it uh, overall maintained readiness within our force. Thank you. Hey, just uh, I would like to highlight two things real quick. Um, Somebody's being a little bit humble about their Sergeant Majors Academy. I was able to go down there in March and talk to you know, a handful of the 40 plus graduates, both male and female, who are very excited about taking something similar back to their countries and attempting to stand up the same programs. And of course we stand by ready to assist with that. What's the so what? What's the way ahead? Based off AFRICOM's guidance, we're hoping to work with our African partners 
and perhaps build regional educational institutes across the continent over the next three to five years and then continue to expand on that based off capacity and need. Speaking with the, um, the commandant of MAFCO, which is the MCOE basically for Malawi, the requirements for the course, they need to run about four courses a year. They don't have the capacity to do that, but they're working on it. They're talking about bringing in other African partners to serve as instructors. So it'll truly become an, an in international course. So again, great work you've did with the uh, academy. Sir, do you have any, or anybody have any questions or? I just, I'd like to highlight, you know, so what you see with the Malawi uh, Sergeant Majors Academy is defense institution building. And so our African partners have the desire, they don't necessarily have the capacity. And that's where U.S. Army Africa and AFRICOM comes in, and that's where our regionally uh, aligned forces come in, and they help our African partners develop their own internal capacity and then expand it beyond their own country. So the Malawi Sergeant Major Academy is a regional training institution. You heard Warren Officer Bislam who talk about other countries are sending them there, 240 graduates. We do the same thing with intelligence training. We do the same thing with counter IED training. And so our African partners are developing African solutions to their own problems and, and building uh, internal capacity that they um, export uh, to the countries around them. So in the long run, um, our partners that we're training now are becoming regional exporters of stability and security. And that's critically important. And then the, the other thing I'll say is for regionally aligned forces, 2nd Brigade of the 101st is now our RAF Brigade that's aligned with Africa. We also have a lot of engineer forces uh, that are aligned with us. Deployments to Africa offer unique opportunities for training. Um, they offer training uh, for deployment, for employing your forces uh, in an austere environment. And deployments to Africa as part of the RAF or as part of building partner capacity build readiness internal to your organization. And that supports what the chief is after, uh, is maintaining readiness within the brigade combat teams. Um, so that's just an example of one uh, thing that's occurring on the African continent. Remember, Africa is three and a half times the size of the continental United States. We've got huge distances that have to be covered. We've got a lot of willing partners uh, that want to partner with us. So it's a great place to train, uh, to work, uh, and to get after the mission. So pending anything from you, Sergeant Major, we'll turn it over to questions. Any questions? Sir. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the presentations. Uh, very insightful and uh, informative. But uh, I want you to uh, share with me how you conduct uh, your training in the academy. I'm asking this because uh, in 2016, I visited uh, US Army Africa headquarters in Italy and from the uh, Germany, some, some facilities in Germany. Uh, and when I was there, I had an opportunity to visit uh, U.S. Army, U.S. Seventh Army uh, NCO Academy. And when I was there, uh, I found that there was this uh, sub major who was uh, sort of the commandant in charge of uh, the training. But sometimes in Africa, you'll find that uh, the training of NCOs and the training of enlisted soldiers. There are officers, there's too much involvement of the officers in there. So I, I, I want uh, to really, I want you to share with me the model you used, which you find it uh, very beneficial to get the best out of uh, the training of your NCOs. And uh, the secondly, um, to share with me the selection of uh, a good side major. How do you select those side majors? Thank you. Sir, thank you for the question. I appreciate it. The only reason our NCO Corps is strong is because of our officers. They empower us to do stuff. 
They're the ones that write policy and help us move and to build schools and academies based off your needs and requirements. So thanks to all the officers in the audience for empowering your NCOs, appreciate it. So how did the academy begin? So one of his sergeant majors attended the U.S. Army Sergeant Majors Academy in Fort Bliss, Texas. Came back to the country, worked with his officers and their leadership and said, we need something like this for our enlisted force. So they contacted us, we worked through AMEP, which helps funds, and they sent uh, Sergeant Major McCarroll, he flew over to Malawi, sat down with the leadership and said, what do you want your Sergeant Major to look like? Gave him some examples, went back, built the POI, built a curriculum for the studies, came back to Malawi, was approved by the Commandant. We had a few Americans assist with the first two, two or three courses of instruction and development and adjusted the POI to better fit their needs. And now I think the third, third or fourth class, it was just the Malawans teaching the course. So it takes, it takes a few years but if you need us to help you do something with an NCOs, we can work with the, your state partnership, you know, or through AFRICOM or U.S. Army to help, help you with that capability, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. He wants you to answer the question, too. Thank you, sir. Uh, as of now, there is no commandant, but it, we have a co course coordinator. So course coordinator is a commissioned officer, lieutenant. Yes, but, but uh, I think in, uh, in the future we'll have a commandant because I, I, I have said already that we have uh, so several challenges in terms of uh, in, uh, any source of empowerment in the Malawi Defense Force or in the African countries in the uh, Defense Force uh, of uh, Africa. I think it's a big challenge uh, for uh, any source empowerment. So uh, we don't do our own as senior any source, but uh, we, do, we have a guide from officers. So as of now, we have uh, instructors, any source, and officer who is a course coordinator. Thank you, sir. General Sicano, I, I, you know, developing an NCO corps is not something that occurs overnight. Um, Sergeant Major Inman has got 30 years in the Army, so that's 30 years of sequential leadership positions that he has been in that have developed him into the Sergeant Major that he is today. So developing an NCO corps is not going to happen tomorrow. It takes, you know, several generations to develop the backbone of the non-commissioner officer corps that's going to run the army. Uh, and one of the things that we have to understand as leaders is if you're going to develop junior leaders, whether they're NCOs or whether they're junior officers, is you have to uh, empower them and you have to give them uh, the ability to make mistakes. They don't have to be perfect, you know. They have to learn from their mistakes and you as a leader have to underwrite that and allow them to grow. So we have learned in the United States Army uh, that NCOs are the backbone. We say that all the time. But by, by empowering our non-commissioned officers, as officers, it frees us up to do other things. And they run the day-to-day -day operations, and they make everything happen. So it's got to be a deliberate commitment and a deliberate decision to building that NCO Corps. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Colonel David Ngete, Botswana Defense Force. I think uh, one of the challenges that uh, many countries are facing in Africa is really managing that uh, culture change. And uh, as uh, he just pointed out that uh, at uh, the NCO Academy, they have an officer being the course coordinator for the course. We went through the same, you know, the same problem in the Botswana Defense Force where we used to have officers running NCO courses. And all those officers were clueless really about uh, functioning as NCOs because there had never been NCOs but they were trying to teach NCOs how to function as NCOs and uh, it took us some time to finally get it uh, nowadays our NCO courses are completely run you know by the NCO course the, the core 
the, co the coordinator is a warrant officer, is, is an NCO. All the instructors are NCOs. So officers are not really involved in the, 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 the running of the NCO curricula. So I'm saying all this to say that uh, we really need to, ma to seriously manage that culture change, you know, so that you know, we, we start to really view the NCO development as being critical. The NCO should be 100% involved in the development of the NCO core, and the officers should just provide the support, provide the resources that the NCOs require in order for them to, you know, to function effectively. Thank you very much. I agree with you. Hey, First Sergeant Lewis, do you have any comments? I mean, you're working at the 10th Mountain Division's NCO Academy now, right? Uh, it starts with the lowest level, which is the sergeant. And uh, NCOs need, to, like you said, sir, NCOs need to train NCOs. So our whole, we have a commandant, which is our sergeant major, and then all of our uh, instructors are staff sergeants. What's unique about the United States Army is they're in the NCO development. There is no officers that are involved in the NCO Academy. It is all NCO driven. And uh, that's important because, but it took, like the Sergeant Major said, it took us a while to get there. So, you know, I was a Sergeant way, way back when, and it took years and years to understand what it means to be a first Sergeant and had more years to be what it means to be Sergeant Major. So it's very important that you have patience in the development, but it, like the uh, commander said, give us a little bit of space and we'll uh, surprise you. Sir, and just one other comment, you know, uh, when I came in as a second lieutenant back in 1988, all of the training I received coming in the Army was done by NCOs. So NCOs trained me at the Infantry Officer Basic Course, at Airborne School, at Ranger School. Um, and then when I got to my first unit as a platoon leader, my platoon sergeant, who was a sergeant first class, knew that his responsibility was to train me as a platoon leader. And if I failed, then he failed. So NCOs not only train NCOs, but they train officers too. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Carla Babb from Voice of America, and I'm gonna be speaking to both of you, I believe, next week, so I'll, I'll hold off on too many questions for you. Um, but I did wanna ask you what you felt was the most difficult thing while you were in Ghana. I know you didn't have a language barrier difficulties, you didn't have to worry about that, but there were uh, a lot of things that you were talking about, and if there was one particular thing that you would improve upon, um, for the next group of uh, guys and gals going, what you thought would uh, help improve the next group that works together. Um, and then for you to really quickly, um, what's the biggest takeaway that you've seen from this uh, officer training that you've been doing since 2014? Do you have any success stories where you can say, this one individual soldier has really been able to grow from learning this? Um, and then for you, uh, if I can ask where because the United States has soldiers all over Africa. Where's the biggest concentrations currently um, of your men and women? So to your question, ma'am, uh, the one thing that we actually took, AARs are very important. And one thing that we took away from the group that went before us was more participation. The group before us kind of went in and what, did their own thing and it kind of turned a sour eye with the Ghanaian army. So what we did is we went in and instead of worrying about training our soldiers in readiness, we had already knocked that out of the park before. So it was more of a focus on joint training and getting a partnership built. And that's what I would say is probably the most important thing for the next group going in as well, is get everything done beforehand and then just worry about partnering with that African country uh, whoever it may be, to give them the best uh, product possible. Thank you very much. As successes of uh, Malad First Force Activations Academy, uh, some of them are the ones who lead the troops. As you are aware that uh, Malad First Force uh, deployed 850 troops to DRC Force for 
Force Intervention Brigade. So some, some of these NCOs who lead the troops there are the graduates from Sergeant Majors Academy. So that's the, the successful of Sergeant Majors Academy for Malawi. Thank you. Ma'am, I'd say that probably the biggest concentration would be a security force operating in the Horn of Africa. Okay, uh, I think we're out of time. I'll just finish off by, by saying thanks for everybody coming. And just, you know, one thing that was taught to me when I first came in the Army, that, you know, one, one of the things we have to do, General Sicano, is, is to change culture. We've got to change the culture of the officer corps, too. And officers have to learn to trust and depend on our non-commissioned officers. And as soon as we do that and we empower them, you'll start to see that change. Um, in the United States Army, every officer has a sergeant. If you're a platoon leader or a company commander or a battalion commander, you have a sergeant, a wingman. My, my wingman, my sergeant is Command Sergeant Major Inman, and he's responsible for keeping me straight. So I think culturally, over time, we need to learn to empower our NCO Corps, trust our NCOs, give them the resources, give them the mission, and then get out of the way. And I think you'll be surprised at what they can accomplish. So thanks, everybody. We appreciate you guys coming. Cool.